you know how to hack it, Ron Livingston dropped by recently to take a look at some of his past work, and he showed us a swinging good time. Take a look. Hi, I'm Ron Livingston. I've played a lot of roles over the years, and I'm going to tell you about some of them in a segment called It's a Livingston. Swingers was like, it's like watching home movies to me. It was one of the very first things I ever did. I mean, at first you're going to pretend to forget about her. You'll not call her, I don't know, whatever. But then eventually you really will forget about her. John Favreau, uh, who moved to L.A. right around the same time that I did from Chicago, had written this movie that he was going to try and sell. Uh, Doug Lyman came on board and said, you know what, let's just make this movie for about a tenth of what you guys think it's going to be. And... Uh, yeah, and we'll just do it. Now that it wasn't going to cost anything and they couldn't afford to get any, any established actors, um, now we all got to be in it. Office Space, when I went to the audition, and like halfway through the audition, I thought to myself, oh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this. I'll go ahead and make sure you get another copy of that memo. OK? Yeah, no, I, 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 I have the memo. I've got it. It's right. Hello, Bill. I had no business having that feeling. I don't think the studio wanted to give me that movie. They said, well, all right, well, he's got to do a screen test because he doesn't look like a leading man, you know, And uh, which I didn't. And so they called me, and my agents called me and said, this is looking great. You're going to come in for a screen test on Tuesday. It's going to be these three scenes. Um, there'll be, you know, hair and makeup in there, and they're going to do in a set, and, they're gonna, and we'll shoot it. And, oh, but one thing, um, they're wondering if you can fast between now and Tuesday. And they're like, well, they just think that it would be nice if you, you know, could lose a few pounds. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't fast. I fasted for maybe four hours, and then I was like, I can't, I can't do it. Band of Brothers was another one of those where uh, it's this, uh, you know, World War II officer. And I was like, I'm not going to get this thing. You know, they're going to go because there, there's a way that a World War II officer looks in a movie. And it's that clean cut. Civilized place for civilized men. I went and I bought a copy of the book. And of course, being an actor, I went to the index and found the character that I was playing and looked at the picture. And it's the picture of him like slouched in the bed, kind of surrounded by all these bottles. And he's, look, he's like hung over and his hair's a mess. It was a moment of like, oh, I'm getting this. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to get this part. Sex in the City was a great show. That writer's room was fantastic. You know, it was pretty much all female. Uh, except for, for, you know, Michael Patrick King. He's just not that into you. I remember we were shooting some scene and Michael came over and says, I got a great out for you. Which you never, you're an actor, there's no such thing as a great out. Cause you're like, okay, my job's over and I'm unemployed. But what is it, Michael? Uh, we got the script and it was the post-it note thing where it's like he's breaking up with her on a post-it note. I would have always thought that he's just not that into you would be the thing that that character was identified with. But man, once that post-it note thing happened, nope. Search party, oh man. What you're talking about. I loved those episodes. Um, everything I read. And then you think, okay, but, you know, we're going to get there, and it's going to be like four young kids. Maybe one of them will be pretty good, and, and the others will be kind of green and learning as they go. And I got there, and it was like, wow, these kids are putting on a clinic. I can't wait to see what they do with the second season. So I'm Sam Loudermilk. I'm four years off the sauce, and I'm super duper excited about getting you on the road to sobriety. Loudermilk is a blast, man. It's Pete Farrelly of the Farrelly Brothers, um, master of comedy. And Pete has this, this energy of being like a 16-year-old kid with a glint in his eye that wants to just push all those little comedy buttons that you're not supposed to push, you know, tip over the sacred cows. Um, but it's, it's not from a mean-spirited place. It's really fun to sort of take the gloves off and throw likable out the window and just be a guy who's just authentically miserable um, and tasked with helping a bunch of people he can't stand. <laughs> so that's funny to me. Coffee for asshole? Yeah, that's me. You can watch Louder Milk Tuesdays at 10.30 on AT&T's Audience Network.